As soon as I came across this 90 degree drill attachment, I knew I was gonna have to build another rider lift. So I'm gonna use this, and for the linear glides, I got this polyethylene material which slides in aluminum T-Track. I bought this at Lee Valley, but you can get it at places like Rockler or Inventables.com, I think has it as well. So I've built in a few rider lifts now, all of which have worked you know, pretty well. The only reason why I decided to build another one is I really wanted one that you would adjust the height of the router from the front of the table opposed to the top. Now for the linear motion, like I said, I bought these aluminum T-Track things from Lee Valley and it came with uh, the polyethylene slides. So here I'm just putting the mounting holes in and then countersinking the holes, making sure that it's countersunk enough that the screws are going to be recessed right in that aluminum. Then I just went ahead and attached those to a couple pieces of plywood nine inches long, three quarter inch, and that with some three quarter inch screws. So the actual block, what's gonna move up and down in the T-tracks, is just gonna be a piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch, measuring about six inches long. And I went ahead and attached the polyethylene strips with some epoxy and drywall screws. Okay, so I think I accidentally cut this piece perfect. Actually meant to cut this a little bit long and kind of creep up on it, but right after my first pass, I tested it and it's actually a really good fit. Uh, there is no play whatsoever. There's just a little bit of drag there, but still moves up and down and zero play. So yeah, once you're happy with your fit, it's just a matter of screwing your side pieces to your back support and that's basically it for your linear motion. Now, moving on to your clamps, or the part what's gonna hold your router to the lift, I decided to use HDPE, and that's basically because I had it laying around. Uh, I did like the fact that it was one inch thick, and I like the fact that it, it can you can tap it easily for mounting holes and stuff, so that's why I did go with it, but you wouldn't need to. You could definitely get away with using plywood or hardwood or whatever you had laying around. So here, as you can see, the bottom part of the clamp is uh, threaded and then I just took the threaded rod put a little epoxy in there screwed it all the way to the bottom and those should remain stationary then you'll be able to just take the top portion of the clamp slide over the bolts and with a single knot on one side and a wing nut on the other side you'll be able to loosen that up and take the rider out fairly easily all right so now that I got a block which slides nicely between my rails I got to mount my router to it so if I set this on here I got the clamps already mounted to the router there's a few things I got to keep in mind. One, with the block slit all the way to the top, I'm going to need room in this area here for my drill attachment because I want this to mount somewhere in this area and with the threaded rod that is what's going to move the lift up and down. I really wanted to avoid mounting it from the bottom because it just puts the handle too low. Then we also have to make sure that if this represents the tabletop, that this knot still goes above the table so you can change the bit above the table, as well as being able to slide it down far enough that the bit will recess underneath the table. So once we got our location, which right about there is correct, I can place a square through here squared to the left, scribe a line, and then I'm going to attach the clamps to the block by threading a few holes up from the bottom of the clamp and I'll attach it with a couple countersink bolts. All right, so I went ahead and cut a couple pieces of maple here. And what that's gonna do is two things for me. One, I extended it up past the router and another plate or another piece of maple is gonna go right here. And that's gonna give me a mounting spot for this side of the router. And I got a spot right here to mount on that side. 
The second thing this does for me, it gives me a place to mount my 90 degree attachment. I'm gonna drill a hole right through the side here. That will slide through the hole and be mounted right there. The 90 degree drill attachment I use has uh, like a handle on it was removable. And once you remove that handle, I had a nice three quarter inch round circumference. So I was able to just take my side piece off, drill a three quarter inch hole. And then I made like a relief cut with the band saw. Then I could go ahead and pre-drill a hole for a screw. And that screw should act like a clamp to keep that drill attachment nice and tight. The next thing I need to do is figure out how I was going to attach my half inch threaded lead screw to the 90 degree drill attachment. So what I decided to do is just drill a hole in the end of my uh, half inch threaded rod a little bit smaller than the thickness of a regular bit. And I just epoxied that in and beat it in for a nice tight fit. So that way that I'll be able to just click that right into the 90 degree drill attachment. One thing to note here is it's very important that you drill that hole dead center of the threaded rod. And that's actually pretty tricky. It took me three tries before I got it. I then took another old bit and put it in the drill and sharpened a real nice point on that. And what I'm going to do is put that right in my drill attachment and then place my drill attachment right where it's supposed to go and clamp it in place. Then I can slide my router up and get it a mark and that's going to give me the exact location of where my lead screw holes are going to be. I then drilled the uh, single hole right through the both clamps and then separated the two clamps and drilled the tap drill size for a half inch bolt through the bottom clamp and then an oversized hole in the top clamp. Then it was just a matter of tapping a half inch hole through my bottom clamp and attaching both of the clamps back to the sliding block. I then went ahead and attached my two side supports and then added the cross member between them which will be used to attach the router lift itself to the table. Here you can see I'm sliding the drill attachment into the clamp and I, if you look close I had to relieve the back of that clamp just a little bit with a bigger size drill bit so I could get al the alignment with the lead screw. Alright guys as you can see everything runs really nice and smooth I'm really happy on how tight everything feels and how smooth everything operates. Now one thing I want you to take note is I haven't had it added any kind of lock on this system and I really want to avoid it because I don't want to have to reach under the table to lock things but if I do find things vibrate too much then I'll just add a bolt right through the sliding block into the backing plate with a nut. So that's it for this project. The next one I'll be making a router lift table and mounting this lift in that table. Thanks for watching.